In this example, we have some uh, experimental data uh, which represent, hopefully, um, some a straight line, which we have to check. And we want to know whether the gradient for the line of best fit for these data is actually statistically significant. So how are we going to uh, do this? So first of all, let's just look at the data, what these data look like. So I highlight my data set here by left mouse clicking, go to insert and under charts, I choose a scatter plot. So here is the scatter plot for the data. On the x axis, we've got the x values here. So we've got x values. These are our independent values. And y, we've got here our dependent values. And this is, of course, a plot y in correlation to x. We can now find the uh, parameters for this uh, straight line or for the, for the line of best fit. We can draw a line of best fit. So I right click on one of these data points, add trend line, and I see my dotted line here. It's not too bad. It uh, covers most of uh, the data points. I look at the R square value and the equation for that. Uh, line of best fit. So here we've got uh, the data. I probably should make this a little bit larger so that we can see that better. We've got a 99.26% for the R square value, which indicates that 99.26% of the Y values can be explained explained by the x values by the x predictor which indicates that this is a very strong correlation uh, the line goes down so we've got a very strong negative correlation here. Okay, now we also have the gradient. So the gradient for this line of best fit, and we can write this as y equals mx plus c. And in order to indicate that we are talking about the line of best fit, I put a little hat on that. So the gradient, that here is the gradient for that, Uh, that would be negative 1.247. That's the gradient and it's negative, so the line goes down. And we want to know whether this gradient actually is statistically significant. Because if the gradient uh, was close to zero, then we would say there is no correlation. Um, but if the gradient is different from zero, then obviously there, there is a, a, a correlation. And in this case, it's a negative correlation. So how are we going to find that out? Well, what we need to do, we need to, we need to really say that this is uh, one of the trend lines that we could have obtained for this experiment. But if the data have been just slightly different, we would have got a slightly different uh, trend line. And what we need to find out is whether there is a statistically significance in this gradient. So what we would do is we would usually start off with a, a hypothesis, a null hypothesis. And I write this null hypothesis here. The null hypothesis would be the gradient for all these trend lines, for the whole population of these trend lines. And I write it with a capital M that indicates the population for all the gradients is equal to zero. 
The alternative hypothesis would be the gradient or for the population or the population gradient for all the lines of best fit is not zero. We would need to set a significance level uh, that is the type 1 error that we are willing to make. And very often we will set this to 0 0.05, which is the same as 5%. And we would then calculate a p-value. What is the probability that given these data that we have here, given these data, what is the probability that we actually observe a gradient of zero? And we would uh, make a decision rule. So p, if the p, the p value, if the probability for this to happen is smaller than alpha, we would reject the null hypothesis. And you remember, if p is low, H0 must go if P is lower than 0.05%. So how do we get this P value? Well, luckily that's uh, fairly simple and I Excel has a really nice tool for that. So we go to the data tab here and you should see a data analysis uh, tab up here. If you don't, you need to install the data analysis tool pack. And I leave a um, description in the video how you can uh, get this. We click on the data analysis and go to regression here. These are several uh, programs and we want to do the regression. So what we need to put in is the data here. So the input range we have here, that's the input range. We need to take the Y value with us. Input for the X range. Again, we've got the data here. We have got labels. We've got a confidence interval of 95%. That relates to this alpha value here. And we want the output to be uh, here in this cell. So that looks good. Okay, so we get our output. Let's just quickly check that we have got everything right. So here from the trend line, the gradient is negative 1.246 and we get the same result here with our output. So because that here, this X indicates the gradient for our trend line. So here we've got the gradient, that's the value, and we have a 95% confidence interval. So that's basically this part here. So the 95% confidence interval tells us that the true mean, the true gradient for the population is somewhere between negative 1.34 and negative 1.15. So this already gives us an indication. We make an estimate that the true population gradient for all the trend lines that we could have chosen must be between negative 1.34 and negative 1.15. This interval does not include, not include zero. This means the gradient, our estimate does not include zero. So it is very unlikely, but not impossible, that the true population gradient actually is zero and there is no correlation. But we probably can already uh, think of the gradient having a significance here. Okay, now we want a p-value and Excel calculates a p-value and it calculates a p-value of 1 times 10 to the minus 8. That would be the p-value that 
Excel calculated. That is the probability, actually, that the true population, true population parameter, in this case the gradient, true population parameter in this case is equal to zero. And it's a very, very low probability. And we can actually compare that to the alpha value. So 10 to the minus 8 is certainly much, much smaller than our alpha 0 0.05. And therefore, we use our decision criterion and therefore we reject the null hypothesis and we say therefore the gradient gradient that our trend line gives us is indeed is statistically significant. Now if we had for example a case where we had a gradient of something like that, we would do that again the same procedure and we would find that the gradient would be uh, let's say between minus one and perhaps plus one for the gradient it would include zero. So this gradient for the trend line would indicate that the gradient could be zero and uh, actually there is no correlation between the X and Y data. In our case, however, we can be fairly sure that there is a good correlation between the X and Y data. We can of course now do a similar approach for the y-intercept. Uh, so if we look at our graph, we see that the y-intercept is just a little bit above uh, zero here. But the question is, is the y-intercept for the population of all the trend lines, is it different from zero? And again, we can write our null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis for the y-intercept, and I call it C, that's the population of all the y-intercepts for the trend lines, equals zero. The alternative hypothesis would be C equal, is not zero. And again, we can look at our confidence interval for the intercept here and we find that the population parameter for the intercept is somewhere between negative 0 0.049 and plus 1.737. So this is a range here, this confidence interval actually includes the value for zero, includes zero. So zero would be a potential valid number for the y-intercept. And that indicates already that the y-intercept might not be statistically significant. But we can do this a little bit better. We can look at the p-value here, which we've got here. So the p-value for the y-intercept, for the y-intercept, which we call c, this p-value is 0 0.06, 0 0.0605. And we see that this p-value is larger than our alpha. And we can use the same decision uh, rule that we had up here. 
uh, where we said if p is smaller than alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. But here p is larger than alpha. p is larger than alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject, fail to reject the null hypothesis and we accept the accept the alternative hypothesis um, we accept well the null hypothesis i should say we fail to reject the null hypothesis accept it it's not exactly the same thing but uh, we can't use the uh, alternative hypothesis and we say that the intercept is not statistically different from zero. Different from zero. So with this toolkit, the data analysis pack, we get the 95% confidence and we also get the p-values which help us to make a decision whether gradient and intercept are actually statistically meaningful, statistically significant, uh, in that they are different from zero. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.